For those of you who don't know me, my name is Dave Arabioff, and I have been crazy about gold since I was 11 years old when my dad took me gold panning for the first time. And one of the things that I wish I knew early on in my early prospecting days was what to do with gold that's still encased in quartz. Let me explain a little bit more about that. Gold was not created or formed on earth. There wasn't enough temperature or pressure in the formation of the earth to create the nuclear fusion required to create the gold particles that we find here on earth. The gold on earth came from stars that exploded early in the formation of the universe that eventually found their way to earth and impacted the planet in its early stages from meteors. Gold could be found on earth in many different forms and gold is so rare that the estimates are that only 5% of the gold that is on this planet has ever been found. Of the 5% of the gold that's been found on the planet, only about 5% of that gold is in the form of visible gold that you can see with your naked eye. Of course, all of you are familiar with gold panning and metal detecting for gold nuggets. And that type of gold is called placer gold. That gold at one time was encased in quartz veins or other variety of host rocks that gold can be found in. And those rocks eventually found their way to the surface of the planet and then through the natural processes of erosion, the gold liberated out of the rocks through tumbling and falling down mountainsides and finding its way into ancient and modern waterways and was smoothed off and rounded off by natural erosion processes. And this type of gold is the type that most of you are familiar with and are out there trying to find. There is another type of gold on this planet, and I'm going to call it finely disseminated gold. And what that is, is that is large ore bodies or large areas of gold that's still in place in the host rock, and it's generally microscopic in size. And the large mining companies around the world will excavate and crush thousands of tons of rock into a very fine powder-like consistency. And then that gold that's not visible to the naked eye is extracted chemically to then be poured into gold bars, which then gets used for jewelry, electronics, etc., there are another type of gold that's still found in rock, and that is what's called coarse gold. And you might find small little veins of gold in quartz veins or serpentine and other variety of host rocks. Then there is larger pockets of gold that are also found in vein structures where the gold is much more visible, larger in size, and can take on many different forms. The most common form of pocket gold is what's known as crystalline. And this gold is easily visible to the naked eye. You can find it with metal detectors. And 
it is very bright in color. It's very yellow because it's still in the rock that it originally formed in. And it is called crystalline gold because it has random structure to it. The gold is random shapes and random sizes and does not have crystal structure to it, which leads me to the very last type and the rarest type and the most valuable type of gold, and that is crystallized gold. Crystallized gold is similar in nature to crystalline gold in that it is still in its original rock that it formed in. However, it has crystal structure to it. It has geometric shapes to it. And it's the rarest and most valuable kind of gold that there is. Crystallized gold is oftentimes 3 or 4 or 10 or even a hundred times more valuable than just the gold value itself. So why am I saying all this? I'm saying all this because on Facebook and other social media platforms and even articles on the internet, I see so many people giving the advice to crush the rocks and pan it. And in some circumstances, that is appropriate. However, it's also very bad advice for the simple fact that once you crush a rock, you have destroyed any of the value that that rock might have as a natural collectible specimen. I have been chasing gold since I was 11 years old which means that's 47 years. And my focus for the last five years has been mining the very rare crystallized gold and also buying gold from other people that have this type of gold. A lot of times there's no way to see what kind of crystal structure might be encased in the rock and it takes someone with knowledge and expertise to maximize the value of those rocks that might contain crystallized gold. Just recently I paid a prospector $70,000 70000 dollars for a rock that had five ounces of gold in it. And you might think that that's crazy. However, the rock is much more valuable as an intact specimen that museums and collectors are looking for. In 2019, I found a piece of gold on my property, on my mine. I own a gold mine. And the gold only weighed a quarter ounce, seven grams. And if I was to take that rock and crush it and melt it down, I would have got about $400 for that rock. However, as a very rare crystallized gold specimen, it sold for over $100,000. And there were more than one buyer that wanted this piece. This piece I called the angel and as you can see by these pictures it is a fabulously stunning crystal form that is ultra rare and so my recommendation is to at least get some advice or input from someone who deals and specializes in gold that's still in quartz or its host rock before you crush it. You might be throwing away a large amount of money by taking what in my opinion is bad advice and panning it out and then melting it down.